Yes. Welcome to our EGM. Um, just for the purposes of making voting easier, could I ask everybody who's not a current financial member to sit on that side of the room, please? So just to, to, just to give you a rundown, um, we're passing around a sign-up sheet for people who are financial members to sign up. So we have a list of members for the EGM. Once the EGM is over, um, and we've voted on these motions about whether or not to wind up slug, um, there will be later an AGM. If you want to sign up for 2011, the time to do that is between the EGM and the AGM. Um, because if these motions pass, the committee is going to make the membership fee for 2011 zero dollars so that you don't have to pay money to sign up to an association that's winding down. No, that's for the committee to decide. No, there is going to be an EGM, which is open to all financial members of, for 2010. Then there is a committee meeting, which is for the committee to vote on changing the, the membership fees. Then we'll be opening memberships for 2011. And then there is an AGM, which is open to 2011 members. You are still a current financial member for the EGM, and you can vote on whether or not to wind up slug. Um, and then your membership expires at the start of the AGM. Um, in my opinion, as a, an individual, if we do pass the, meet, the vote to wind up slug, there's not much point to becoming a financial member because you only get to vote in the committee who are going to oversee the winding up. But if you want to do that, your support is greatly appreciated and the money will end up going to support Linux Australia. So it's still a good cause. Now, I'm assuming that everybody who's here has seen the, the notice of the meeting and therefore knows what they're here to vote about, right? Um, are you a? Yes, you are. Good. You. You just signed up for 2010, right? Yes, you did. If you look at your membership card, you'll see that it expires today. So, you want me to run through the motions? Yes? Um. <laughs> Okay, so in short, we've had a lot of talks over the last year about uh, what, uh, why, what, who the audience for Slug is, who it exists to serve, what people want from it, um, and the conclusion is that, okay. yes? Yes, I declare the EGM open. Second. All right. Um, so the, what we decided was the core important thing that Slug does is it looks after the local community. Um, we have other organizations like Linux Australia that did not exist at the time Slug was incorporated by Jamie, amongst others, um, which now fulfill much of the, the larger purpose in terms of uh, forwarding, you know, forwarding the open source movement, um, education, things like that. Um, Slug over the last year cost just over $1,000 to run from insurance fees, mostly. We received uh, about $800 in membership fees, leaving us with a 200, roughly $200 shortfall. Neil will cover this in more detail at the AGM. Um, it's just not sustainable for us to keep running Slug the way we have. Um, so the motions here, the intent is to wind up Slug as an association, but only after Linux Australia has agreed to take on 
um, the duties of running the monthly meetings and supporting the local community in the way Slug has done in the past. So to actually go through reading out the motions. Motions to be considered are, number one, in recognition of the fact that the aims and goals of Slug are substantially a subset of those of Linux Australia, and furthermore, that Linux Australia is better equipped to support and sustain Slug's community, and further, that having Slug exist as an association results in duplication of effort and inefficient use of resources, that Slug be wound up as an association. No, I just talk like that all the time. Uh, two, in accordance that the association with the Associations and Corporation Act 2009, section 65, that all surplus property and funds at the time Slug is wound up be donated to Linux Australia. Um, as an aside, the funds are about $300, so they fall quite short of our operating expenses for the next year. Um, we're not broke yet. If Slug... If Slug does, is not wound up, and if everybody here signs up for $25 for membership for the next year, we can't meet our operating expenses for the next year. <laughs> Harrison, he's cheap. So, uh, third, as the property and funds donated to Linux Australia in this way were originally donated to Slug with the intent to be used to support the local open source community in the Sydney area, we request that Linux Australia continue to use the property and funds to support the open source community in the Sydney area. And fourth, in recognition of the fact that there exists a thriving open source community in the Sydney area, that the above actions not be taken until such time as Linux Australia has created a subcommittee charged with supporting the Sydney open source community by running monthly meetings and providing other such support as may be warranted, and appointed to that subcommittee at a minimum, the person elected as president at the AGM, which is later tonight, to be the convener of the subcommittee, and as treasurer, the person elected as treasurer at tonight's AGM. Um, yeah, because Linux Australia would be just setting up a subcommittee, they can appoint whoever they want. Um, they don't have to go through the elections process. But as I'm sure John would like to tell you in a moment, the way LA intend to run this is that the community will have their yearly elections and elect people, and then the LA committee will appoint those people to the, to the subcommittee. There's a dispute procedure within the LA constitution um, that members can use to override decisions the committee make or to kick out committee members or... Um, I mean the council because LA has a council and subcommittees. That really should be fixed so it has a council and committees. I'll get around to that one day. Um, I'd just like to say a few more words before I open the floor for other discussion. Um, I've already mentioned the financial cost of running Slug. Um, just some of the other things that we have. We must have a registered person who is registered with the New South Wales government as the contact point for Slug. Um, they have to have their home address on file. They are legally liable for various things. Um, because we're an incorporated association, we have to do financial reports every year which have to comply with certain standards which we have to present to the government, uh, the uh, Fair Trading Department, um, and we've been lucky to have people in the past who can do that. Um, but it's a lot of paperwork just to explain the fact that we bought some insurance and got some membership money, and it, it really doesn't achieve much. The same amount of money donated to Linux Australia would have a much bigger effect. Um, Linux Australia has insurance that already covers meetings like this if we were to be a subcommittee, um, but can't cover us um, as an independent association. Um, I'd like to hand the mic over to John, who's the president of LA, who I'm sure has a few words to say, especially about the third item, and then open it up for further comments before we vote. Thanks, James. Um... So I don't have a lot. Did anyone not read my email to the list? Probably. Okay. Slackers. Um, so um, Linux Australia has been talking to Slug for a while and some other um, local lugs about um, basically offering our support to lugs so they don't have to worry about insurance and bank accounts and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we're in a position to supply that um, to lugs. Um, as James said, um, the, we would still like the lugs to have elections if they think that makes sense. Um, or have some mechanism to decide who they want running 
um, the subcommittee and we'll then just appoint those at the next um, Linux Council meeting. Um, in terms of Linux Australia and the motions there, the only one that we have a slight issue with is number three, um, which is that all the money, all the assets of Slug are used in the Sydney area. Um, it's just a bit impractical for us and um, if you sort of read what I said in my email, I basically said at the end of the day, Linux Australia has a grants program. If the sub slug subcommittee came to Linux Australia and said, hey, we want to run an education expo, like Patrick did last year, um, which is going to be much more than you guys have in your bank account anyway. It's like, a, what is it, 1,200 bucks we spent or something? Um, yeah, I mean, any, any sensible request we get from, well, anyone, you don't have to have to be part of slug, that makes sense to the open source community in Australia or Sydney in general, we're most likely going to approve. We have a $20,000 grants budget of which... Last year we did use just over half of it, which I think is probably the first year we've ever done that. It almost... Yes. Oh, no, no, we used like 12K. We spent 12K last year. Just under half. Which one? No, no, that was, that was much less. The Brendan Scott thing was only 3K. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll be voting against number three, and I'd recommend other people do otherwise. Um, it's not a biggie, but Linux Australia might come back and say, oh, we're not happy doing that just because it... It's difficult to do. And it's, like, at the end of the day, it's $300 in a camera, um, and I don't think it makes a lot of sense. You guys will be able to spend $300 easier anyway, and we're fine to have the camera kept being. So I, I think I said, while we're still at Google, it probably doesn't make much sense for Slug to have the camera, so we'd love if we could donate it to another Lug that needs one, um, but otherwise Slug can keep using it if they need to. Um, I think that's it from me. I intend to vote against number three also. I encourage everyone to do the same. Does anyone have any further questions or comments or anything? Number three is... It's gone. Number, th number three is there because at the time I drew these things up, um, it sounded like the kind of thing that a lot of people who have come to the meetings given input um, would want. Um, a lot of people expressly want uh, seemed very concerned that um, the resources of Slug are used locally because that's where they were donated. Yeah, I, I do think it's a valid concern. So it's in there because it's quite possible. I, I think a lot of people will want that. Uh, assuming motion for... So one of the points that was brought up on the mailing list was maybe we can do this at the AGM and if it passes we refund everybody's membership money. But the law is quite explicit that you cannot, ret if you're dissolving, you cannot return money to members. Um, so we just can't do that. Um, the only option we have is to donate it to a, a similar body um, and Linux Australia is the obvious choice because they'll be taking over running the operations and they, are, they have the same goals, just with the broader scope. Any other comments? Uh, the, there's only one proxy vote that we're aware of and that's Judith is carrying a proxy so she gets to vote twice. Um, yes, he is. I, I think there's a good argument that it was that it was the fact that Slug existed um, and Slug went through its early growth phase that led to Linux Australia later forming. I don't know because I wasn't around, but reforming. That sounds good.
believe him, he was around. <laughs> okay, so if there's nothing else, then I think we can move on to voting. Who said yes? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so the first motion. Um, in recognition of the fact that the aims and goals of SLUG are substantially a subset of those of Linux Australia, and furthermore that Linux Australia is better equipped to support and sustain SLUG's community, and further that having SLUG exist as an association results in a duplication of effort and efficient use of resources, uh, that SLUG be wound up as an association. How do you vote? Who's, uh, the eyes raise their hand. <laughs> As unanimous, uh, any nays? No? Excellent. Words be omitted in future? Feel free to submit your own motions. Um, so, uh, second motion. In accordance with the Associations Incorporated Act 2009, Section 65, the motion has been passed unanimously. Thank you. Uh, in accordance with the Associations Incorporation Act 2009, Section 65, that all surplus property and funds at the time slug is wound up be donated to Linux Australia. Do we have a seconder? Thank you. Um, eyes? Unanimous, fantastic. Ooh. You're abstaining. Of course you are. <laughs> um, Melissa, can you recall that John abstained? And Judith, you voted I twice? Yes. Uh, as the property and funds donated to Linux Australia in this way were originally donated to Slug with intent to be used to support the open source community in the Sydney area, that we request that Linux Australia continue to use the property and funds to support the open source community in the Sydney area. Uh, do we have a seconder? Excellent. Uh, eyes? Uh, who, who's voting for this? At number th this is number three. Um, if you vote yes, you are voting that Linux, we want Linux Australia to constrain themselves to spending it in the Sydney area, which Linux Australia would prefer that we didn't vote for. So, are there any votes for? Nope. Votes against? Excellent. Defeated unanimously, except for John. Okay, and... Number four, in recognition of the fact that there exists a thriving open source community in the Sydney area, that the above actions not be taken until such time as Linux Australia has created a subcommittee uh, charged with supporting the Sydney open source community by running monthly meetings and providing other such supporters may be wanted and appointed to that subcommittee at minimum the person elected as president of the next AGM to be the convener of the subcommittee and as treasurer at the person elected as treasurer at the same AGM. Do we have a seconder? Excellent. So it will have to wait at minimum for the next LA committee meeting, which will be, right. And appointing a... Yep. And once that's done, the slug committee who are elected at the AGM shortly can start the process of winding up. Um, then because all of the because of this motion, assuming this motion passes, we won't be winding up unless LA does go ahead with that. So in that case, we're just in the difficult situation that we have decided not to charge for membership fees. We have no income. We don't have enough money to pay for insurance. <laughs> We're going to have to go to the members and appeal for donations or wind up anyway. We can pass a vote. <laughs> he will be the president. 
Yeah, we can, we can totally ask for funding from LA. Um, we can ask for a grant to pay the insurance costs and such. What do you mean by issues? No, the point is that there, there is still a committee who are electing at the AGM okay. who will be overseeing the, the slug until it winds up. Yeah. Um, and the fact that LA are going to appoint uh, the convener of the subcommittee will be the same person as the president, um, it ensures continuity of leadership. Uh, November. Uh, yeah, no. The, the insurance doesn't expire till November, so we have plenty of time. No, oh, awesome. Which we can then donate to LA. <laughs> well, it's, uh, any further comments or questions? Excellent. Uh, seconder? Him. Okay. Uh, votes for? Unanimous except John. Votes against? No one. Excellent. I declare the EGM closed. What? Eight? <laughs> I implore everyone to eat as much food as you can in the time we have this quick meeting. Eat fast. <laughs> eat fast. Oh, Harrison. Hi.
What's wrong with here? Nothing. It's just a bit boring and you know, company got to evil. <laughs> no, I'm still very proud of the company. Hello. I do apologise. You're not staying for the fascinating AGM with uncontested seats that will need no voting. <laughs> I've been awake for uh, 40 hours. How are you? Why are you 40? The assignment due today, since I started on Thursday. We had a assignment due today. We had a assignment due today. I saw someone quote, um, there was some quote, um, the later it is at night, the better it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. On an upper skelly. Yeah. Yeah, it was something to, if you're not up all night, you have to be pretty hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something to do with night code. Can you answer your sister's t shirt? I can wear the old. I'm like a tutoring. Hey, can you come and come back to my page? I'm assuming you had to. Huh? Wait, no, I can't. Um, if I could have your attention for a second, I'd just like to announce the committee has decided that membership fee for 2011 is $0. If you would like to vote at the AGM, um, you need to see Neil. Or if you would like to stand for a position, you need to see Neil and sign up as a member for 2011. Um, if you're not standing for a position, there's not a lot of point uh, because at this point, all the positions are uncontested. Um, and so there's not even a necessity to vote. Um, but if you'd like to sign up, you are perfectly welcome to go ahead and become a member. Yes, it passed. That's what we were doing out there. Neil, please sign me up as a member. Not for 2011, no. It's a whole new year. <laughs> because we don't, there is no necessity. And then it all disappears on alcohol. I heard the German club for a while. I was actually like, oh, yeah. 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 typing my shit through.
Hello everyone. Just while, while we're preparing for the AGM, Jamie has volunteered to give a short potted history of Slug, based on from someone who was there at the time. Um, this is impromptu, so uh, no, no. I can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, I'm Jamie Honan. If you look back at the very early archives, I don't know how far back the archives go. Very early. Well, so they were some of them. It goes back to 93, 1993 or 1992. Uh, I think it was Chris Brown or someone from Softway. I don't know if any of you know Softway. Softway was a Unix house over at Chippendale. We had our first meeting there. It was just an impromptu thing. Um, a guy called Paul Thomas and a few other people. Peter Chubb was involved. Still a member. Um, 
So we were fired up with enthusiasm. Uh, you've got to remember in those days, there was virtually no public internet access in Australia. So um, there was one or two sites, Metro at Sydney Uni, you could dial into, and the APAN network was just getting going. Um, <clears throat> we would do things like um, swap 20 floppy disks because people didn't have CD-ROM drives. Um, at those stage, the Linux kernel was, you know, Linus was on 0.99, and it was really going to be one, one day, one day. Um, the distributions, um, there was a thing called the Manchester distribution, uh, and software landing systems, and there were a few other things like um, Transamerica. Slack, this was before Slackware. So um, the, some of the distributions are quite small. They only took up 20 floppies. And, uh, you know, if you bought a box of floppies, one of them was bound to fail. Um, so very quickly we got going. We had the first meeting and there was nothing. Nothing happened for a month or two. And I said, come on, let's do something. Let's do something. And um, I can't remember where the next meeting was at uh, some office like uh, Sequent or something like that. Uh, but we quickly established a presence at um, UTS. And it was really uh, Tim, Tim Bray? Tim, Tim Bray and uh, another guy. Tim worked at UTS and he just I hired a meeting room, a tutorial room there, for the grand sum of $35 and passed a hat around. And I think I gave one of the talks about Tickle TK. And um, people were you know, quite keen on that. And... Uh, Tim said, oh, look, we'll have a Friday night. No one's around. We'll just grab a room. And for five years, that's what we did. <laughs> so <laughs> he just went in and made sure no one was using a room and we'd go and use it. We put up signs. No one was the wiser. The security guards were quite happy. Oh, here's these reputable-looking people. They look like students or something like that. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> slug meeting. That's the sign. What's that? <laughs> Um, I quite liked it there. It, uh, it was a nice um, academic atmosphere. Um, we quickly got going with a very enthusiastic um, people like Anthony Rumble. I don't know if anyone can remember Anthony. Yeah, um, there's a lot of people, and the names just just escape me now. You know, at the end, uh, can, can I see Ken regularly? I email. Uh, Ken, you know, a couple of times a week, and Graham, I still have lunch with. Graham's still going. He's, uh, you know, got diabetes and a lot of problems, but he's still carrying on. Jeff War, now you see Jeff on the very active <laughs> at the moment. Um, so after a, uh, a couple of years getting going, Linus came to Australia uh, under the auspices of Org, the Australian Unix Users Group. And um, uh, I sort of uh, wrote to him and convinced him to come and give a talk and come and stay. And he did. He came around, um, he came up the eastern coast. I don't think he went to Western Australia. Um, Tridge, <coughs> Tridge was involved with the Canberra uh, Linux users group, Tridge, Andrew Tridgell. And Tridge sort of hosted him there and took him up in a hot air balloon. And he came to Sydney and... Uh, he stayed with me and we, we uh, held a bit of a party. And, yeah, it was called Good Times. Yeah, he gave a talk. Sorry? That was, at the, that was at the LCA. That was at the LCA. That was much later. No, no, no. The whole thing. Okay, because it, Tridge took him to the zoo there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. I see you. You know the history better than me. Um, so the incorporation happened, uh, I guess, after four or five years of this. We started going to the Graphics Arts Club. And uh, we would have uh, a whole lecture hall of people. And um, there were a whole group of people from UNSW who came on board and they were really keen. And... and Remember, this was although you could do things by the internet, you were able to. There were a lot of people who came with questions and um, 
and, you know, how to do things. And, um, you know, it wasn't like I, I saw I was a bit of a flashback when someone was configuring X just then. I mean, that's how you con had to configure X. You had to put in your little mode numbers and you had a spreadsheet where you, you know, the number of lines and the number of things, you know, crazy. So Charlie Brady and another guy um, uh, were involved from pretty much the start. Charlie, um, um, this is the other guy whose name I forget. Uh, they started a thing called, um, a distribution called um, Smith, Smith, E. Smith or Wordsmith or White's. Not why Smith um, yeah, to Canada. It was became part of Nortel or Mitel or one of those. Yeah, and they they I mean they worked there for quite a while. As far as I can I know, Charlie's still in North America or Canada. Um, some other people, um, you know, Peter Chubb's still around, of course. Um, the uh, the big thing was the we incorporated. Uh, the big thing was the first conference organised by Rusty Russell. Um, by that stage, uh, I was pretty burnt out and I was sort of no longer directly uh, running the meetings or organising them because they were quite a, quite a handful. Uh, I used to organise a speaker every Friday night, every last Friday of the month. And, um, you know, we had some pretty weird speakers, but they were pretty good times too. They were, particularly at the Graphics Arts Club where we used to, um, we would uh, pretty much have the run of the whole of that club, the top floor of it, and uh, chomp away at the, uh, at the food there. Yeah, yeah Jeff Waugh, uh, he said the boiled, the boiled television entrails, which was some sort of funny thing. Yeah. Mad Dog... <laughs> It's a very funny story. I, um, you know, uh, Comp OS Linux announced Cola was uh, before before all the social media. The big thing was Usenet, and it was great. Usenet was really really good. It was text only, and there was a Comp OS Linux dot announced Cola, and it was a moderated thing. And there was something. There was a magazine as well, which was uh, pretty fundamental. Um, Linux. Journal, Linux Journal. I don't think I don't know if it's still going. Anyway, we read about how um, Linus had been sent an alpha, and um, you know he was porting uh, Linux to the alpha architecture. You know, which was a big deal because it was only 386, and Linus, Linus himself has said, uh, "Oh, it's only going to be 386. That's what it's going to be." And uh, I said, "Oh, does anyone know about this?" And this wizened old guy at the back of the horse, yes, yes, I know something about that. I sent that box to Linus. <laughs> it, was, it was Mad Dog. So uh, Mad Dog got up and gave us a spiel about that. And at that, that stage she was working for DEC. Um, and Mad Dog came to several of the conferences afterwards and uh, was very active in um, the Linux International. And um, at that stage there were a lot of... <laughs> promises and, and really a feeling that things were, were going to, to move somehow and no one knew how it was going to unfold. Um, this was before the MAD IPOs. The, at, at around 2000, um, um, was it 1999 or 2000, that everything ramped up with the Netscape uh, IPO and everyone just saw dollars everywhere. Linux Care was one of them. Yeah, Linux Care. So we had a trade show. We had a trade show at Darling Harbour and it was just packed uh, with Linux stuff and um, the guy running the trade show was also involved with somehow Linux, Linux Care or one of these groups and, and everyone was really um, in on it but, yeah, it, it was going nowhere. <laughs> the one that did really take off was Red Hat. Red Hat was just an ordinary little distribution like SLS or any of the others and it's just simply they got on in on the IPO money and they just didn't burn all their money and now they're a billion dollar company, which is pretty fabulous. And the other guys, of course, who did really well out of some of our friends here <laughs> who added their own little secret sauce and uh, have done very well. Um, 
the conferences went on. The Jeff War was a president for a little while, I believe. Um, he um, got very involved with GNOME, and um, even. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you about that. Okay, what, Graham Graham Kelly, who looks a lot like me, who what happened is we this first install fest. I rented a little um, thing over at Burwood at the Burwood um, thingy. Uh, no, the, it's called a, a community centre or something. It's where our, next to where our partner used to have their meetings. And uh, so for Saturday afternoon, I just said, "Oh, you know, bring your boxes along, and we'll see what we can do." And um, Along came Graham Kelly. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, you know, it's just like so many people at that stage. Because there was nothing like it. You couldn't get into Unix. It was just nothing. You know, there was, was, that's before Linux, around the same time as Linux was BSD 386. And, you know, there was promises of this BSD 386 would run on a PC. And, and you just, just, everyone was just talking about it. It was just wanted it so much. And, um, you know, promises never delivered. Just nothing happened. Lin Linux was the one that really delivered, and that's why that's why it's 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 taken off like this. Why it's here today. But getting back to this meeting, um, Jeff War, uh, sorry, Graham Kelly has two daughters, uh, nice girls, um, and one of them was going out with Jeff at the stage at that stage. Right, this is before Peter. Okay, don't let this guy out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so Jeff was a uh, you know, a bit of a lost soul or something, and Graham, you know, with enthusiasm, just said, oh, you've got to get into this, look at this, this is great. And so Jeff came along to a few meetings, and that was it. He was hooked. Yeah. And there's a few stories like that. There's quite a few people who've come as very young people, teenagers. We've had a lot of teenagers come in and, um, and take them. That, that, that's that's about the sort of end of my story. Um, it's sort of a, um, you know, uh, the LCAs. I've only you know, just been involved on the periphery now, and even now, I still use Linux. Um, still, uh, all the computers at home. My daughter, um, one of my daughters, has turned a renegade, and she's bought a laptop with the dreaded system on it. But the rest of us are. Uh, <laughs> Sorry? Which I just want those ones. No. <laughs> that that shall not be named. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it was a big thing. It was a big thing at the time. So that, that's that's my story. So um, yeah, that's the early history. But you guys are really got to take it to the future and go on with it and find repurpose it because the purpose of it originally was. There was nothing else. There was no help. There was no, there was no way. And it was deeply technical and deeply uh, confronting. And you know, to get the hardware working, you know, just w every driver had to be tweaked. You had to have all sorts of things. And now, of course, you can just. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I guess they're... <laughs> 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 Yes, I remember one of the talks earlier on that I saw. Hardware, I 
everyone who talked to us earlier. Was um, the bit representation of hardware floating point numbers and, and how Matt's worked on them? It's one of my earliest memories of slug minis. Yeah, we went through a whole lot of phases. There was a whole Debian phase where there were a few, a fair number of people involved in Debian, which is about the time I was actively involved. Um, and then there was a bit of pushback from some of the other people saying you're getting too Debian. Heavy. So we uh, formed a Debian special interest group where we had a separate meeting at a separate time of the month, which was much more casual. It was one talk. It was at a pub. We ended up doing it at the Squires thing down in the harbour there. Um, and you'd have a one-hour talk. Well, we'll before, that's right. One-hour talk and, and the rest was just drinking and social. Um, but that took the Debian, gave the Debian guys another outlet. So FP group. There's been a whole lot now, right? FPC and stuff has come out now. Yeah. On the same level. There's heaps. A lot of them are here. Every time I come out of lifts, there's a sign for some other meeting. Yeah, the Python group, the FPC, they're all making I'm just getting ready to present the. Alright, what's the first item? We'll start. Um, Sorry, Melissa. Just general announcements, not anything necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> could you could you grab my laptop? The Mac? Could you bring my MacBook? Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Got it. For 2011? Yep, that's fine. I'll put it on. Tim, can you make this render go? It's not mirrored.
Right. Um, <laughs> the question was raised on an, on a discussion mailing list, and the reply I think was um, just between you and me. They were never that accurate anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got a friend who lives in China. And if you look at the, the street maps of, offset by about, about 10 metres by the satellite. Using an Android phone or no, just the website. Yeah. If, you, if you search for a place, it'll give you a point marker that's like 10 metres off. You switch between street map and satellite, and it's correct in satellite, but wrong in street or. China deliberately walk their maps Okay. Are we. I'm just going to make another round. Okay. Um, Excellent. So as the current president and um, meeting chairman, I'd like to hand over to Angus Lees. Angus is not a member of SLUG. He's not been a committee member for quite a while. He's not running for committee member. He's our neutral third party returning officer. So I'll now hand over to Angus to run the meeting, and I'll just take notes from up here where you can see them. I'm a uninterested, disinterested observer. Yes. There is a difference. So apparently we started a quarter hour ago. That was good. Uh, we've got normal announcements. Any announcements? Other announcements? We just did that. We just did that, part. We just did that bit, yes. Dripping off, right. And that's me, good. And then, right. Wouldn't it be great if we had a President's Report? James, do you have a President's Report handy? I have a summary of a President's Report. Um, I'll follow up to the mailing list with a more detailed President's Report within a week. Um, in summary, I've already spoken about a lot of this earlier tonight. Um, I ran on a platform of, I think it's time to wind up Slug as an association. Okay, I'll We have done that. Well, we voted to do that. I would depend on certain things happening. It took longer than I expected. Uh, it could have happened a lot sooner if we'd worked harder, but if, if I'd worked harder. Anyway, that's happened. Um, along the way, got a lot of consultation from the, from the people who come to meetings about what they want from meetings. Um, we got a lot of people suggesting different things that we could do, um, none of which has happened. Um, Tim, you were going to have uh, coffee meetings. When's that starting? Excellent. <laughs> so we tried a lot of different meeting formats. At the start of the year, you might remember, we were running two streams with, um, as well as main talks. We were running boff sessions and... We had a couple of meetings. We had Drupal user groups happening as a boff. We had quite a few other user groups come along. Um, what we've ended up doing now is a much smaller meeting where we just have one speaker, then we go to the pub with much more emphasis on socialization um, and less on trying to be all things to all people, which seems to have worked. People seem to be happy with lately. I'm not convinced that that's necessarily the right way forward to grow the membership to attract more people but it seems to be pleasing the people who are coming to the meetings, which is a bit of an oxymoron, really. Um, I, I think having a year of experimentation and wildly trying things at random and seeing what works has been good. Um, I think that if the elections go as expected and Tim becomes the president, the next year should be much more stable and much more focused and have a direction, which would be a nice change. Um, I'll follow up with more full report to the mailing list sometime in the next week. Now I'll hand back to Angus. All right. Uh, next thing on the action pack agenda, the minutes. An excellent suggestion. All those against. That's <laughs> game. Uh, right. So the minutes from the gem, which were pretty carefully written up 
and presented here in front of you. Can you read that? Excellent. <laughs> Would you like me to read them out to you? I can. Oh, yes. That is really badly messed up down there. No, it's just, you can't read that now because it's too dark. It's also very badly um, the, the motion, that, uh, to record the, the motions, uh, it says that voting, motion one was moved by me, seconded by Tim, passed unanimously. Motion two was moved by me, seconded by Tim. John abstained, everybody else voted for. Motion three was moved by me, seconded by Peter Hardy. John abstained, everyone else voted against. Motion four was moved by Peter, seconded by Tim. John abstained and everyone else voted for. <sighs> Difficult. <laughs> you lucky we only had two people voting for it. It was a close vote. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say one thing that was really interesting about Once again, the apathetic majority has it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, right, minutes. so minutes to defend by vote. Minutes of the 2010 AGM. We have the minutes from the previous AGM, which was a long time ago. They were mailed to the mailing list a couple of weeks ago, so you've all had plenty of opportunity to read them. Does anybody want another opportunity to read them now? No, They've been clearly on display in the basement for some time now. Yeah. Does anyone object? Seconded. Four. Anyone against? Excellent, good work. It means the last year accepted. Right, now we have elections. No, no, now we have the Treasurer's Report. Oh, Treasurer's Report still, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm moving on too much. Uh, do you need to project? Sorry? Do you need to project? Or can you speak loudly by yourself? Uh, just, uh, I'll just pull up the spreadsheet. Yeah, thank you. Did you share it with me? I, yes. Oh, yeah, I was looking at it before. Yeah, yes. uh, that one, yeah. Why is Chrome searching for Docs? That is clearly not what I want. Silly company, who would work there? You get a funny. Yes, it's something we live in every day. Oh, James, <laughs> James, they've, they've left out your account already. <laughs> <laughs> Grr. Grr. That's the wrong one. Yeah, it's the wrong one. That's the wrong account. This one. It's okay. It's okay. I've got it. And now I just need to switch to that one. There we go. This is yours. Twelve bucks. Okay. So um, the revenue from the year was uh, memberships and twelve dollars from surplus pizza. Um, not actual pizza. Uh, and the expenses was just um, the insurance, uh, bank fees, and post office box expense. Um, so we lost 270 bucks for the year. This hasn't been updated for the memberships tonight, so I'll send out an updated version when it is. Um, so it also hasn't been updated to show the fact that we've got a, we have to pay the post office box fees again. Or did you just pay it? No, no. no oh, please ignore me. It's, okay. Okay. okay, so the post office expense is there, but uh, we haven't paid that yet, so we owe 145 bucks for that. Um, and if you could just scroll down a little. So we owe uh, up a little. Mm. Can I ask how many letters we got? Okay. Yeah, post box? Yeah. What do we need a post office box? Uh, we need a post office it's, box. It's one of the legal requirements. Yeah. 
Um, no, we could no, just. Ha we got <laughs> bank statements, right? We one get, every month. We get bank statements. Uh, we have one bank statement a quarter sent there. We have occasionally someone sends a bill for the post office box. And then I uh, regularly empty the junk mail. So. Okay, so it's election time. Let's let's all call our representatives and tell them. So we have 145 bucks owing, and we have between the petty cash and the bank account 386 bucks. So we're 241 bucks that'll be going to LA if we wind up. <laughs> okay, I move that we accept the treasurer's report. All in favour? Really? You're in favour. Uh, anyone against? Anyone against? No, good. You know, I want to propose that the post office box, we don't need it. The next president, the church should be the president of the house. That would ex... That, the, there you go. The, um, that would be great, yeah. And it has to be a matter of public record, and that exposes the president's house or mailing address to, to public scrutiny. Um, it's bad enough that the, we have a registered officer who has to have their home address as a matter of public record and without adding other people who have to have that. Yeah, Linux Australia could be a much, much better choice yeah. than any company. Yeah. Okay. So... so just coming back up here, these are the candidates we have so far. It's the current nominations. Does anyone else like to nominate themselves or someone else? And there's a few of these where we have no seconder who is a current financial member. So if someone would like to say who is the person who also running for the Second, Polly for secretary. And Neil. So we have Chief for President, nominated yes. seconded. We have Patrick, also present, but he did not accept, alas. We have two for vice president nominated, but not accepted. No, oh, not alas. Right, Patrick, uh, accepted, no seconder. Patrick is overjoyed to receive your second. Wait. <laughs> uh, treasurer, Neil, nominated for James. Seconded and accepted. Wonderful news. James, who, alas, is nominated and seconded. And running, right, treasurer. Hang on. Secretary, no. sorry. It's the secretary heading. That makes more sense. Yes. Right. So. So, uh, are there any other people who would like to nominate themselves? Or the person sitting next to them? Or someone who's not sitting next to them? Women. You would have been the last one. Yes. Sorry. Um. Shush. I would actually suggest that I'll appoint three people to avoid ties. Um, but uh, for the purposes of the AGM, um, we are required, we must have someone for the four executive slots. Um, we're, we're not required to have someone for the, for the ordinary committee member slots. And as all the committee is going to be doing is overseeing the winding up, I personally don't see the point of having them. Um, if you do, you can nominate yourself. 
Yeah, if you want to have someone there, feel free to nominate yourself or to nominate someone else. So, sorry, um, this is people has to only be 2011 financial members? Everybody who is here Everyone signed up on that list. The only person here who is not a 2011 financial member is you. Excellent, good news. <laughs> they, paid the, they paid the membership fee of zero dollars. This is the same circumstance that Linux Australia has. Um, so, sorry, did you just want to make one last check to see if there was anyone who wanted to nominate anyone for OCM? Would anyone like to nominate themselves for one of these positions or perhaps one of our long list of ordinary committee member positions? Three. Right. Uh, I would like to accept all of those as nominated since we have no conflicts there. Excellent. Yeah, it's uh, all right, what's the next bit? Voting happens. Candidates, there's 60, 60 seconds. Good, that was good. I might enjoy that speech. Yeah, the candidate should probably be offered 60 seconds to talk before the voting. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to second John's motion of thanks to the outbound committee. Yeah. It's been very outgoing, wonderful news. Oh, well, it's nice. Right. <laughs> if someone who believes the previous vote is no good, if there's not much to thanks. And that's it. Is there any other general business? Agents closed? Agents closed? Nothing else? Anybody closed? Nope. Right. Done. Any other general business? Would anyone would just like to suggest anything, talk about anything, raise a motion? Thank you.